the second match, the women's double in the team time between Denmark and Canada. Match of the team, Mia Blickford put Denmark up 1-0 um, with a uh, convincing uh, victory against 19-year-old uh, Talia Ung. And um, now we turn our attention to the uh, first women's double. It is uh, Maiden Fuogo and Sartusen representing Denmark and uh, Representing Canada is it uh, Rachel Hardrick and Kristen Sai. First the Danes on court. Mike and Fogo with the uh, black uh, compression stockings on. Played um, yesterday against um, Malaysia. Tough women's double that they won against Li Meng Yin and uh, Tina Muralitaran. And uh, from Canada, Rachel Hunter leading uh, Kristen Sai onto court. Rachel Hunter, the taller of the two players, as you can see here. It is the first meeting between these two pairs, even though they both participated at the Let's Olympics. <laughs> so what? Black. So red is for you. <laughs> it's black. You know. It's a choice. You want to see? Who's the server? Mike right. and Chrissy and the side. Okay. Good luck. So, Canadians uh, won the coin toss and decided to um, serve after all there was a little confusion about it then the Danes chose to start on the far side of the court not much of a uh, drift here in the arena but um, shuttles a bit to the slow side in uh, the first matches yesterday here is uh, Mike and Forgo together with a partner won the uh, bronze at the European Championships here in uh, 2021. She was born in Odense where the uh, Denmark Open is uh, staged and uh, they're two of their previous highest rank as uh, 14th in um, the world. And a partner, Sarah Tusen, born uh, 80 kilometers uh, approximately south of uh, Aarhus here in uh, Fredericia. Also plays in Odense but uh, lives in Copenhagen and practices at the uh, National Center. He's turned uh, 30 after all and now solely focusing on uh, women's double. They had their breakthrough at the uh, Indonesian Masters back in uh, 2020 when they reached the final. And, uh, match point to win the title eventually ended up runners up here is uh, rachel hundred the tall canadian 175 centimeters that's five foot nine born in uh, toronto and uh, currently at the uh, highest rank with the uh, christian side One of the comforting things for the Danes is that the Canadians have never actually beaten a top 20 pair in the world ranking. Here is uh, Kristen Tsai, she's born in uh, Tainan, in Chinese Taipei, lives in uh, Vancouver, 26 years of age, and both the Canadians uh, on their studies um, alongside badminton. Kristen Tsai actually has a major in uh, criminology. Umpire York Hubert's. John John, if we can get him in the picture there, is um, our service judge from uh, Bahrain. Both 
both pairs actually did um, quite well in the Olympics. Fuoco and Tuzen defeated Li Sohi and uh, Xin Chung Chan, who ended up finishing fourth. Uh, and uh, Tsai and Hondure, yeah lost two very close games in the group stage to uh, Peak Sane and uh, Matsutomo and Mats Matsumoto and Nakahara, the double world champions. I think it was um, very um, comforting uh, performances uh, for the Canadians. Excellent job. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Canada, represented by Rachel Honderick and Tristan Tsai. And on my left, Denmark, represented by Sara Tegeson. Canada to serve, Rachel Andre to Michael Ferregard, Lavo, play. I had the pleasure of calling the uh, Danish team tie yesterday against uh, Malaysia and um, it's all a uh, women's double of um, high class and especially uh, Sartus and uh, took uh, responsibility in the uh, final stages of uh, that match played a magnificent um, third game to uh, secure a win for Denmark in that match and uh, a good kill by Forbo at the net. That's not something we see too often. The Danes clearly have uh, a preferred uh, positioning or lineup. They want Santos in at the front court or the mid-court, but definitely not too much at the back-court if um, they can have their will. Choose the former mixed doubles player. Won the uh, European Games in uh, mixed doubles back in 2015 with Nicholas Knorr. Also great retrieval by Rachel Hunter. It's not so easy to get to that one. That's good work. And Michael Forbo. Excellent defense by Tsai and uh, Honduric and uh, really, really well placed uh, defense there. That's beautiful. Sh that shot from uh, Rachel Honduric. Okay. 
opened up in a really good pace. The four players on the court. by Tsai. I think it became a little bit too flat, the uh, clear from Michael Frogo. That's what she has to be really careful about, getting the uh, correct length. With, uh, Brian Yang sitting there behind the mask. It's really difficult to uh, recognize people with the uh, face masks on. Brian Yang, who played another good match earlier today, defeating uh, Kanta Sunyama. Really fantastic defense. That's amazing. Really good work by uh, the two Danes. Patient play, and you've got to be patient. You've got to stay patient in these um, playing conditions. Oh, the racket's gone, <laughs> gone missing there. Fantastic job to get it back and return the next shot. That's amazing. times so this time just opted for the uh, block In, uh, in terms of movement, but um, it's Martin Frogo who sees the action. Kristen Tsai. The right hip of um, Sartusen. Not easy to defend when at the same time moving. Good 
Hopefully. Oi! It's a good retrieval. It's, it's shots and rallies like that. The Canadians who look to be winning. Really, really good flicker, but um, this lady in the picture here, she did it well to uh, get it back. So I think the, um, the balance, we're taking chances. This very, very fine one. You cannot take too big chances, so you risk losing the rally quickly if you're wrong. And the Danes have created the a three point cushion here. They had it at uh, 7 4. Mm. Now 10 7. Short lift, and eventually Michael Forgo puts it away. It's a great rally. So, a four-point cushion for the Danes as uh, they head to the mid-game interval. This time uh, I was able to catch bits and pieces of the Danish coaching. Uh, something about variation was really, really important, stressed uh, coach Jesper Holgor. Ankles, good figure from uh, Sartuj, and she had a couple of those yesterday as well. Um, good ankles in uh, their attack, but also taking pace off, respectively putting pace into the shuttles um, is important for the Danes. And uh, they also had a read that flat pushes to the corners uh, was a possibility. That's really well done there by Kristen Sai to get uh, below that very agile. Rachel Hunter, that's uh, the second time that I've noticed she's 
Missing a fairly simple shot uh, below the tape. Looks like it sort of uh, fell off a racket. Number rally so far, 58 shots. Nothing compared to what Dane started out with yesterday in the first round, it was 94 shots. And then all four were warm and ready to play on. I'd really like to see some uh, angle on uh, those attacks in terms of going cross court and cross body of uh, the opponents. Basically, from both pairs, I think it's a, an opportunity that um, we haven't seen too much today. But there she managed to convert the attack, uh, Magen Forbo, and it seems like the Danes have a little bit of an easier job doing that than the Canadians at the moment. Look at that. Left side and then right side. A little bit... Um, a little bit too close to the line to my taste, but... Uh, Maybe she was, in fact, playing it with some margin and um, just used all of that margin here. So it still stayed in. And uh, now the Danes with six point advantage here in the second game, 14 8 up. Good pressure from uh, Kristen Tsai. that she established yesterday must have done a lot of confidence from uh, that match Kristen Sai who sacrifices herself. Look at that. And then Rachel Hunterick managed to uh, still get some uh, quality on that shot there. That's right where Tuesday is and she gets a little bit too greedy and wants to get it uh, to the left side of the court. were getting the upper hand there but the clear from my uh, Magnus Borgo what a fantastic placement it's not like it's a newly formed pair the two uh, Canadians but anyway they doubted which one to uh, reply it 
formed their partnership. These two were back in 2017 in a tournament in Orange County Badminton Club, which they won. Excellent play by uh, the Danes. They're not putting enough away on the front court, in my opinion. Uh, Kristen Tsai and uh, Rachel Hunterick. And, and uh, when they have the opportunities on the back court, they also have trouble penetrating the um, Danish defense. That's well played. It seems like the Danes are much more um, in sync in terms of if we hit here, what uh, what do I cover next and what does my partner cover and where does the chances occur? Uh, so basically, Zion Hungary should be um, reasonably satisfied that they're only four points adrift. That's the problem when the shuttles are a little bit slow, then that's not a big opportunity, it's just an opportunity, even though you're standing at the middle of the court. In faster playing conditions, that would be a huge attacking opportunity. And then, this being a little bit slow, you tend to get a little bit greedy because it's difficult to score, you have to work hard for it. So if there was an easy point lying around there, it would be nice to pick it up. It ends up being an easy point for the opponents. That's a good smash. And this time she was coming from the mid-court area, Rachel Hunterig, instead of moving side to side on the back court. I don't know if that um, helped. We'll have to uh, keep an eye on it uh, as the match develops. Good little block. looking for options, every player on the court, trying to find the spot, trying to get themselves into a little bit better position. Wow. Sartusen lost the uh, patient battle. Now that could be important going forward here because um, both Thai and uh, Hunderik are former singles players on uh, this international level. They both have wins. Rachel Hunderik won Brazil International back in 2018, defeating uh, Sabrina Shaki in the final. So it um, sort of gives you an idea of the level. And uh, for Kristen side lies a bit further back. That was back in 2013 when she won the Peru International in the final against uh, Nicole Blader from uh, Germany. Really important rally here after the uh, long one. Those clears are creating a uh, confusion. Clears from Mike and Forgo, and she's put that long Kristen side. Yeah. Hits herself in the head with a racket, that was stupid. The shot, she thinks to herself.
missed it, Sarah Thyssen, but I like the uh, idea of moving forward. Just one point in it now. costly at this um, stage of the first game. That's a good smash. The Danes should pick up on the fact that uh, Hondurik when hit round um, left hip or mid body then all of her returns is going um, to her own right side the way she swings her racket <laughs> and a good smash from Honduric to take the point right back And it would be a steal, in my opinion, if uh, Zion Hunterich were to uh, run away with this first game. side with the same kind of uh, movement that you see for instance uh, Sartus with when uh, when she's at the front. I feel that there might not be as many uh, sort of uh, set combinations in the attack as, as the Danes have but anyway there's still only one point in it but this time it's a game point for Hugo Thusen. Excellent smash by Kristen Side. Straight down in the middle between the two gate uh, between the two Danes. If we get it in uh, replay, we'll see how she moves to cover that uh, left side uh, of the Danish court. After leading 17-12, had to work really, really hard to uh, finally win it on their second game point, 22-20. Okay. 
in the uh, Danish camp was that we cannot become too passive um, even after long rallies we still have to be proactive uh, was the word from uh, Jesper Hogo was also uh, emphasizing that if they can get it down towards the feet of um, Rachel Hunderick in the attack they should be ready for the um, soft reply and to play the cross net to get out of the uh, defense. Now, given that I actually think that the Danes were pretty much dictating the rallies, I couldn't say dominating, but it was, it was played on their premises, so to speak, in the first game. Canadians were still really, really close. So if they can uh, rectify uh, a couple of things, then I think um, they have a good chance of um, making a comeback here and eventually forcing a decider. I think they, um, when Hunter is, um, that's one of the situations here, when Hunter is at the back, she very often has really nice steep smashes, but it mostly gets the shuttle back at her so if she can't kill it from the backcourt or set up an even more dangerous uh, attack then she needs to go a little bit higher in her smashes to activate um, Kristen Sai on the uh, front court and then I think in uh, the defense I think the Danes are a little bit uh, more threatening in their defense than the Canadians and by that I mean that uh, the Danes look for the counter-attacking winner and one of the examples is that um, Hunderick sometimes plays this soft uh, cross block which in my opinion really does no harm in women's doubles you can always just block it back and you still have the attack whilst the Danes they're a little bit more looking for the chances to score directly in the in the um, In the situation between attack and defense, the situation where you try to convert defense to attack, um, there's some easy point lying there, and I'm not certain that the Canadians are hunting these opportunities enough. So, in my opinion, they should move their defense um, a step forward, maybe even just a half step or a foot. It depends on the shoe size, in my opinion, but definitely uh, get a little bit closer to the net so they get bigger opportunities of um, turning things around. Another thing is also that um, this with the longer rallies and so on, I, I still feel that it might be to the advantage of um, well, the Canadians if they could play a little bit longer rallies. But uh, let's see how the second game unfolds. see the Danes able to uh, activate uh, Sartusen on the front court. Able to put enough pressure on to hit the right spots in terms of anticipating where the defense reply is coming from uh, Honderich.
That's much better. Much better play from the uh, Hungarian side. The inner side of the uh, Tsar in there. And that means that a lot of the uh, replies to the smash is going across the middle of the court. And there was Christian side to put it away. And I feel they have to be careful now, the Canadians. You know, I know they were trading six points in the first game at some point and still managed to get back even. again inner side of Tuesday. Good defense from Honduras there. There's the cross. Oh that's a beauty shot from uh, Rachel Honduric. Amazing reverse slice. Look at that. Totally catches uh, Fuoco off guard and it landed a bit in front of the uh, first double service line. That's really good angle she got on that. Um, it's all Canadian. 34 shots in that rally. backhand from uh, Rachel Hunderick. That was just what the Danes wanted. They are ready to capitalize on uh, situations like this, especially in slow playing conditions. It's a nice, easy point. Ooh. We saw yesterday Fuego committing uh, some easy mistakes. Not really able to uh, be consistent at um, high level. Well, sometimes she plays at an extremely high level, but uh, yeah. Not up and down. Replacement. points they've um, let's slip away the Danes Beautiful example of uh, what I mentioned before that the Danes are hunting much more for the chances in the uh, turnaround phase. Good follow up by uh, Mike Fuego.
work. There. Did she touch it or? No, she didn't. Two-point lead for four-point Tusen at the uh, mid-game interval here. Still very close match. As the coaches uh, offer their advice to the players. situation that uh, the Danes were discussing. Off did uh, Rachel Hunter it, and that um, made it difficult for Sartusen, who had to rethink her reply. Good flicker, good flicker. And momentum wise, I think. The Canadians are the ones with uh, momentum at the moment. They were down 10-7, so five of the last six points. And I feel the error rate with the Danes is increasing. Well, such a beautiful return on that flick serve from uh, Michael Forbaugh. If I were the Canadians, I would uh, see what happens if they targeted the other side of the uh, service field, the forehand side. Seems like that one down the left shoulder is perfect for these uh, stick smashes, steep smashes. Follow up.
They got out of the jail early in the rally there, the Canadians, because um, Tuison wasn't really ready for the follow-up. Eventually, a point for the Danes. That's a good one as well from Sartusen. Variation first from Kristen Sai and then from Sartusen. That's so important. I feel that um, and sometimes I forget about um, the variation and just uh, wants to hit it as hard as possible. to uh, pounce on that one had it gone over from uh, Rachel Hunterick. Here's uh, Wittinghus. Hans Christian Wittinghus, the one who, the uh, player who won the uh, decisive match when Denmark won the Thomas Cup back in 2016. He's in the arena tonight to uh, support the Danish girls. Danish men's team playing tomorrow night only the day off today that's beautiful play by uh, Martin Fuhrbaum making her way forward there consistent if they want to win on the world tour like they had the chance to do in uh, Indonesia in uh, 2020. Oi, oi, oi. 
hesitation from uh, Hunterick. Very good clears. Perfect play by uh, Michael Fruego and uh, fantastic follow up by Sartusen. There's the uh, hesitation by uh, Hunterick. Shot before the final one here. Michael Fogo hit it towards the uh, inner sideline. So very difficult to uh, return it anywhere else than uh, where some intuition was hunting it. placement on the uh, right shoulder of uh, Kristen side. Again, Sartusen coming forward. So, match point has arrived for the Danes. Four chances to uh, put their team up to, to nothing. In a uh, very, very good uh, badminton match, in my opinion. I think both these pairings have uh, good opportunities of uh, challenging internationally in uh, the years to come. The Danes were the more proactive, uh, in my opinion, in this match. They also made the most errors, but um, as you can see, it all paid off. 22-20, 21-16 for Fuego and Tusen. And uh, magnificent uh, entertainment. Good follow-up on uh, the win from uh, yesterday and uh, it was always satisfying to be able to uh, help the team. So, whilst we uh, wait for the players to leave the court, we see the last uh, 
Riley here. Again, notice how uh, close Sartusen uh, gets to the net. Now this is too short and then Sarah moves forward looking for the opportunity. And there it is, just where she needs it. So, next match coming up after this women's double is the um, second women's single. A repeat of uh, a match played two weeks ago in uh, Finland at the Suriman Cup. Uh, it's uh, Lina Christofferson against Rachel Chan when we are back. Uh, after this um, short break with the uh, highlights from the women's double. So, situated in uh, the Mercedes Forest, very close to uh, the sea on the eastern coast of uh, Jutland, is the Ceres Park, Ceres Sports Park with the uh, football stadium and uh, the Ceres Arena where we are today for the Uba Cup Day 2 of competition. As you can see, Denmark is um, to nothing up against Canada in this uh, team tie and a win will actually mean that Denmark is assured of a 